The famous preacher Martin Lloyd-Jones in a sermon on Philippians said, quote, false doctrine makes joy in the Lord impossible, end quote. Pastor John, how would you articulate this connection between orthodoxy and joy? How does false doctrine make joy in the Lord impossible? The key in that phrase, I think, is in the Lord, joy in the Lord. False doctrine can make you very happy. Uh, If you don't believe in hell, you might feel happier. Uh, If you don't believe that you have to uh, not sleep around on the weekend and cheat on your wife, then you might have some brief surges of pleasure. But when he says false doctrine makes joy in the Lord impossible, he's articulating something really important, namely the only joy that glorifies God is joy that is based on a true view of God. If you have happiness because you see God the way he's not, you might have happiness based on your doctrine. But your doctrine would be false, and therefore God would not be honored by your happiness. Be like a person who's just thrilled. He's watching a, watching his favorite football team, and they just crossed the goal line. Yeah, yeah, he's cheering his lungs out. He realized he ran the wrong way. He crossed the wrong goal line. He didn't make he didn't make six points. He lost. And so um, that cheering isn't honoring the team. It's making a fool out of the team. And so false doctrine presents God or His ways in the way that they're not. And if we are happy by what God is not, then he's not honored by our, by our happiness. And so right, right doctrine is, in fact, a way of showing God in his ways as they really are so that our joy can be in what is, and then our joy is an honor to God, and God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. I, I don't always say, but I should say more often probably, that when I say that, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. It it presumes that the God in whom we are satisfied is the true God, that we have true views of him. And so false views of God will prevent joy in the true God, and that's the only joy that, that honors God. And I don't know whether you, whether he had it in mind or whether you have it in mind when you ask the question, but clearly, if you have a wrong view of salvation, you lose your joy forever. And that's what was happening in, in, the, in the book of Galatians. They, they knew God, and the Pharisees knew God, and Jesus says, you're, you're children of hell, and you're going there because your view of how to relate to God is upside down down. You think that God is impressed by your works for him and that you can put him in your debt, and you can't. That's a hellish doctrine, and cursed are those who bring the gospel like that, Paul said. So all happiness vanishes, and that's probably what ultimately Martin Lloyd-Jones meant, is all happiness is going to vanish for those who follow a false gospel. So it seems built into this is some level of distrust towards our own affections. That's a very good that's a very good point. In fact, the way I would build on that, I have been criticized sometimes for being a hedonist, a Christian hedonist, because historic hedonism has often meant pleasure becomes the criterion of what is right. You discern what is right by what makes you happy. That's never, ever been what I've meant by hedonism. All I mean by Christian hedonism is you are living to maximize your pleasure forever. And that's the biblical sense of why it's right to pursue your, your happiness. But, but yes, we must be very suspicious of making our pleasures the criteria of what is right or holy or good or true. You do it the other way around. You, you let the Bible decide what's true, and then you labor to submit your heart to that so that you can find happiness in the truth, not determine what is true by what makes you happy. Thank you, Pastor John, and thank you for listening to this podcast. If you have a question for Pastor John, please send it to us via email at askpastorjohn at desiringgod.org. Please include your first name in your hometown. You can find thousands of other free resources from John Piper online at desiringgod.org. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening.